Hello, and welcome back to Scarlet Hollow, episode four. So let's load it up, and then we will go through the recap together, because I cannot wait to see what awaits us. I'm pretty excited. Which one is it now? 14th, right? Yeah. Yes. Episode 4. The music from the end of episode 3, though, that was insane. We had our first jump scare, so if you missed it, go back and watch episode 3, part 2, because I had to split them up. So, episode 4 awaits, like I said, so let's hit continue. Would you like to recap before starting episode 4? We're not going to do the full recap because, like I said, that's a lot. So let's do a recap of three. Because stuff was crazy. That music. Uh, we got two possum friends. I hope they're still there next time. We met Janie and her husband Daniel. Tried to convince us to, like, go talk to him. But we were like, we don't need it. So... We found out that Sybil's making Tabitha some weird tea. Something sketchy's going on there. We met Bo, who was Duke's son. So that was sad. He's going to look for his dad's body in the woods, which is insane. Because it's missing. That's crazy. We had breakfast with Stella and Gretchen, which was really nice before our ghost hunting. We got to know more about her. We met the mayor. The mayor is a dog. Every mayor in Scarlet Owl has been a dog, <laughs> which is funny. Gretchen didn't seem to be a fan, though, of the dog. Yeah, that's Daniel. We don't really like him. We don't trust him, as said, from the start, so no thank you, strange man, Daniel. We don't want any. We met Reese, which was really exciting. And we found out he's so cool. And look at all his cool art. That's really cool, too. But we also found out he can't leave the house because he's really sick. And he doesn't know what he's sick with. Which stinks. And his mom is Dr. Kelly. We met her, too. And she's taking care of him. Or is she making him sick? We're, we might find out in this episode, actually. So he was, like, protesting her, though. He wants to hang out with us, but she's like, you're all overdo it. Yeah. So, but he did get sick at the table, but that was also after he took his medicine. So, I wonder. Yeah, see? Ooh. Yeah. Gosh, the music changed drastically. We went ghost hunting with Asker and people. What, what? And Avery was there, which was really nice. That was fun. Um, this music is throwing me off right now. Sorry, it's spooking me. There's a stain on the floor in Rosalina's old room, and it held a trap door type of thing. And we went down it, and some crazy shit happened. And we learned a lot more about the history of the town. Ooh, that was... Ooh. That was our jump scare. That scared the shit out of me. Well, our friends got possessed by, like, ghosts of the past, and Wayne actually saved us and pulled us out of the crazy ghost world, so... Which we learned a lot about Scarlet Hollow's past, so... And we learned that... What's his name? I already forgot. Ugh. Um, Charles Shaw, that's his name. He wanted us to give up half of our life for him to go away. And we were like, no, we're not doing that. So Wayne, Wayne told us not to do that too. And he pulled us out of there. You fought towards the end? Yeah, he pulled us out of there. Ugh, look at him. He's so creepy. So everyone was really shaken up from that. And Wayne was like, see you soon. Stella was very shaken up. She had tears in her eyes. So then we walked home with Sybil. And we kind of talked to her about being a witch and stuff. Because we have speculations that she has lineage which with the lit, the 
witch, geez, from the last story. Then we got home and we tried to talk to Tabitha about her history and our family's history and she didn't want to talk. Surprise, surprise. One day, though. Um, we went to bed and we texted Stella one last time. Because we said sorry, too, because she said sorry. Oh, that kind of scared me. And now the spirit of Charles Shaw commands the entirety of City Hall, which is insane. Disaster looms as tall as yet over Scarlet Hollow, which is where we ended the last episode. Mm -hmm. And now it's time to wake up. Wake up. You open your eyes, it's a new day. Last night seems so far away, you can almost pretend the horrors you witnessed and that Onyx were nothing but a nightmare, chased away by the harsh morning light. But you know that the furious spirit of Charles Shaw Jr. yet lingers, locked behind the doors of the town hall, still tied to the earth by its hatred of you and your bloodline. An involuntary shudder runs down your spine, but your thoughts are interrupted by the buzz of your phone on the nightstand. Hope you made it home okay. Oh, that's so nice. Haven't heard from Stella since last night. How about you? Jeez. Checked your phone. There's nothing from Stella. Probably call her. I've been refraining from calling her to give her space, but she messaged me last night. I'm sure she's fine. Oh, God. What if she's in trouble? Yeah. Maybe she's sleeping in. Never mind how Stella is. How are you? <laughs> Ever not a rough night? She's probably still shaking up. What if Wayne got her? Does Stella disappear like this sometimes? Let's just call her. Right? Yes. Stella. Hey, what's up? Oh. Da da da. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I'm not. Ah, oh, I hate that. I'm not able to come to the phone right now. This is actually a recording of my voice. It isn't really me. Technology, huh? Eh. Anyways, leave a message. Or don't. I never check this thing. Oh, jeez. The mailbox is full and can't accept messages at this time. Text her. Hey, you. Good morning, hot stuff. <laughs> I'm kind of worried. After you ran off last night, text me as soon as you get the chance. Can you are pretty worried about you? Please respond. Have a favorite cryptid hunter. Hey, send Stella a photo of a nervous puppet. We're pretty worried about you. You wait for a few silent mo minutes. Your message sits undelivered. Undelivered? Undelivered? Does she do this often? Kinda, but with everything going on, I don't feel comfortable letting her run off on her own. We should look for her, right? Come to town, we should stick together. I agree. Looks like you have your morning plans in order, yep. Ooh, so many things. Visit the possums. We need to name them. I just don't know what to name them. What should we name them? So cute, eating toast. <coughs> just having breakfast, little guys or girls. Or possums. Two possums stare up at you. They both have a bread now. That's nice. Yeah, it is. This one's face on the right is so cute. Gosh, so cute. Wave at them. Hey! They continue to stare up at you blankly in response. <laughs> I hope they never go away, especially since we are gonna name them. This is their home now. Oh, and there's nothing you can do to change that. Yay! We have pet possums. Let's check that doll. Our, we have possums and a resident doll. What's up? I forget your name. Thank you, right to the closet. There's no denying it. The doll moved it some point since your most recent visit. Was it up top on this one box? But your long dead relative's creepy doll isn't the only thing that's different. Someone was in here. Judging by the residue that was left behind, you're pretty sure you know the culprit. That means he was in your room. But was, here, was he there while you were out the previous day or did he enter while you slept unaware? Unawares, just a few feet away. Ew, Wayne. We're starting to like you. Don't ruin it. Something to mull over, yeah, for the rest of the day. 
Let's just take another shower, right? We collect our thoughts in our shower. You might as well take a shower before starting the rest of your day. In our grimy bathroom. You step into the guest bathroom and into the shower. Feels good to wash away the grime of last night's haunting, but eventually you'll have to leave this place and confront the rest of the day. In the meantime, you think about the door in the clinic. You're still drawn to it even now. You're going, you'll be going back there today. You're sure of it. Think about Oscar and Rosalina, how the specter of Charles Shaw Jr. has left them. Think about the afterlife. It's undeniably real at this point. Think about Stella running off last night. Hopefully she's just sleeping in. Think about Duke and imagine him. No. Scrub feverishly again. Think about Sybil's warning. Think about Wayne. Think about someone special. Think about finally being out of this hellhole. Mm. The door. It's important, I think, in this one. You're done here. I wonder if that affects what happens. You turn off the faucet and dry yourself off. Head downstairs. It's time to face your cousin. Yeah, talk to us, Tabby. She's not here, but it looks like she left a note on the counter. The Scribbles had to run the library and needed a new house, so I'm giving him the keys to the Maxwell place. How nice. She's helping Oscar and Rosalina out. And the miners decided to stage a strike today, of all days, so I won't be around. I know there's no point asking you not to do anything reckless, but I'm asking anyways. Be back late. Call if you get into trouble, Tabitha. That's nice, though, that we can rely on her. She's kind of telling us that. Time to figure out the rest of your day. Fuel up with a quick PB&J. Why not? Ooh, sparkly. If Stella's MIA, who knows when you'll get the chance to eat. You make yourself a PB&J in anticipation for the long day ahead of you. And that's that. Head to town. It's time to head to town. See ya, Fru-Fru. You head to the front door and begin your trek to town below. The sun shines down through a thin layer of clouds, illuminating the path in a watery gray light. Ooh, look at this ditchling under my face, right? Is that what that is? Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Ugh. Glimpses of pale figures dot your periphery. You haven't seen ditchlings in the middle of the day before. They're getting bolder. Oh, what's up? To your surprise, you find a familiar face making its way up the path towards you. Hey, I was just coming up to see you. Hope you were able to get some sleep after everything that happened last night. I was up most of the night totally wired on adrenaline. Even if I'd be able to chill out a bit, knowing that thing was right down the street. Yeah, not super conductive to a good night's sleep. Do you think it'll still there? I hope it might go away on its own. Does the library look different? I wonder if we can get Tabby to deal with it. Hopefully no hooligans break into the library. No way was I trusting a ghost to uphold its end on a bargain. I'm sure it'll wear itself out soon enough. Doubt that. Yeah, I'm more than a little uneasy too. The ghost can stay there forever if it wants. Not my problem. We're not saying that. Does it look different? Like you can see the haunting from outside? It's boarded up, but I can't say I've gotten close enough to see much of anything yet. We could always check it out together. Though maybe we'd better not tempt it. That ghost seemed pretty desperate to eat your soul last night, and I don't know if I mean that metaphorically or literally. Hopefully some s slapdash plywood is all it takes to contain that thing. I don't like the thought of it spilling out onto the main street if it smells a drop of scarlet blood nearby. That means Tabitha's in trouble, too. Well, if any Scarlet owes that ghost sign, it's her. We're not saying that. Mm. What if it does come after us? Is that possible? What if the library comes after me? Seems like it can't do much besides try to trap you in another ghost maze and you manage to get out of the one out of one of those without much issue 
Sounds to me like it's basically harmless unless you're not a Scarlet, but even then it's not like it managed to break anybody's bones. Though maybe it could be if it wanted to. It was, it was kind of strong. How do you feel now that it's a new day? Possession is the sort of thing that can leave a mark on a person's soul. You were coming up to see me? That's sweet. There's ditchlings everywhere now, even though it's daytime. Have you heard anything from Stella of that? I haven't heard from her, though we don't text much and I haven't checked with Winnie to see if she came in for an early breakfast or anything. But if you haven't heard from her, that doesn't sound great. Seeing her like that last night was awful. She's usually unflappable. Flappable? Mm. Ditchlings in the daytime. Avery turns to survey the tree line. I noticed a few on my way up. They're kind of funny now that I'm getting a good look at them. With their scrunched up little sharpie faces. Sharp pay? Sharp pay faces. So, should I be worried about these things? I know they're a bad omen or something, but like, are they dangerous? They're not going to eat me if I take a wrong turn, right? I don't really know. You don't need... You need only fear what they foretell. You might get some eggs laid in your skin. They're pretty small. We might be safe. I don't know. They might... Not if you eat them first. What? I'd rather not find out. Does anyone in town have a flamethrower? Yeah, seriously. What they foretell. They bad omens. Okay, cool and ominous. As long as being eaten alive isn't on the table. We're still not sure. Dot, dot, dot. Unless they're foretelling a zombie invasion or something with werewolves, in which case I guess I'm still stuck with being eaten alive. Yep, either or. Mm. How do you feel? I'll leave a mark on a person's soul. Aw, oh, thanks for asking. That's this. Thanks for asking about the state of my soul. I appreciate that. I'd be lying if I said it didn't have an impact. I kind of feel bruised all over physically and spiritually, but hey, that's part of life, right? Nobody makes it to the end completely unscathed. And I'm kind of thrilled that my new emotional baggage comes from a ghost instead of some boring normal trauma. Fair enough. Do you want to come look for- I mean, can't hurt to have more people looking for her, right? Let's head to town. I might as well ask. Hope it doesn't put him in put them in danger though. Do you want to come? Absolutely. I told Winnie I'd be coming in late today, so I've got time. I don't know how much time though. From what I saw this morning, there's already a few miners already holed up in there. Oh, the diner. They must be using it as a home base for the strike. Oh, by the way, there's a strike going on. I'm sure you already know that though. Have have to imagine. Tabitha would have told you this morning. Let's head to town. Start back. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, good idea. You and Avery start back down the path to town. Oh, Kanika. Oh, look at her outfit. So cute. It isn't long until you once again find yourself on the main street of Scarlet Hollow. Hey, look how cute you look. Jeez. Okay, Ray, you made it. And you picked up an Avery along the way. Hope you're do both doing okay, like, emotionally. Look how cute her outfit is. Adorable. Yeah, I'm not too bad. That's good. I feel like I got crushed by a steamroller or something. Joints all out of whack, totally exhausted and super foggy. Jeez. Mom has been insisting I caught a cold and I wasn't buying it, but as of this morning, I've come around. It's definitely something beyond exhaustion, even considering the rid ridiculously stressful week we've all had. But I'm not going to let that stop me from looking for Stella. Do you still think there could be a rational explanation for all this? Is someone manning the general store? Yeah, Miles. I'm supposed to see your mom at some point today. Maybe she'll finally shed some light on things. I think last night just pushed her over the edge. I know I've only had, I've only known her a couple of days, but it feels like she has a tendency to run off from difficult emotions. Usually she just changes the subject, but I guess this time she wound up literally running. Let's not dwaddle. 
I'm worried about Stella and it doesn't feel right to be doing anything that isn't actively looking for her. Are y'all sure you need to go looking? We need- what? Yeah, we're sure we want to look for her. She's probably okay. Dealing with complicated emotions. Probably that keen eye. Still think there's a rational speech for us, so many no. Oh, they know. They know. You're absolutely right. And as her friends, we can't let her her be alone at a time like this. I've made that mistake before. Oh. Plus she could get mobbed by those weird little creatures or worse. Exactly. This is no time for anyone to be off on their own. Who knows what kind of weird stuff is out there. After the past couple nights, I wouldn't be surprised if there was actual Bigfoots in the woods just waiting to eat any human who wanders too far from civilization. Do Bigfoots thirst for human flesh? Is that some kind of common knowledge I wasn't key keyed on in on? What do Bigfoots eat? If you know, let me know. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised is all I'm saying. Okay, let's get started. I don't want to waste another minute to where to first. Probably her house. We should go to the cops, right? Let's check in with Oscar and Rosalina. They should be at the Maxwell place. Check out the diner. We should go to the mines. The mines already. We should check out the church. Let Avery know that you and Kanika can take it from here. Why? He just said he'd come along. Hmm. Let's go to her house. Where's Gretch? Yeah, Gretchen, too. Good place to start. Maybe she just slept in. That's what I'm hoping. I would have gone already, but uh, I was kind of nervous about go doing anything by myself today, just in case I ran into yet another horror from beyond the veil or whatever. I hope Gretch. Gretchen's with her wherever she is. You make your way towards Stella's house. Kanika knocks anxiously on the door. It creaks open. Whoa, the creak of all creaks. Jeez, the interior is cold and not just physically. There is an absence of joy in life that leaves only a chill behind. The ghost of an empty house and the sob sobering dread that comes with the knowledge that your search won't end here. The house is quiet, the world outside muffled as you take a cautious step over the threshold into the muted air of the living room. Not excitable, no excitable pug rushes to greet you at the door and you have a feeling that no Stella is going to emerge from the shadows to sleepily greet you. You seem to recall that Stella closed the door behind her when the two of you left for the library yesterday morning. I don't sense anything supernatural here, but I don't like the look of this. We ate breakfast here together yesterday morning. She closed the door behind us. She's dead. Stella died, and it's all my fault. I'm not from around here. Is it normal for people to leave their doors? Oh, okay. Enter the house. We should say she closed the door before. Um, we were both with her for the rest of the day. So she came home last night. Or somebody else was here. I swear, Wayne, if you did anything to Stella, might as well invite ourselves in, right? Screw going in there. Let's just get the cops. Yeah, we should go in. Cool, I'll be brave and go first. Thank you. Avery casually steps over the threshold into Stella's house. The living room is almost exactly as you saw it the other day. Aside from a corner of the room dedicated to Gretchen, Stella's house almost feels like a museum. Everything's organized with a sort of tidiness you wouldn't expect from someone as rough and tumble as Stella, and only a handful of objects feel like they belong to her. Hmm. Whatever happened to Stella doesn't look like it happened here. Doesn't look like there was a struggle or anything unless it happened in another room, or maybe someone or something caught her off guard. You didn't have to add that last part. I'm going to forget that you said that and just be thankful that this doesn't look like a crime scene. 
investigate. We might as well investigate. I don't think we're going to find much else here. Let's move on. Investigate kitchen first. Stella's kitchen is messier than she left it yesterday. A couple cabinets are hanging open and a loaf of bread sits on the counter by a used butter knife. What's, what's up with that? The crust of the bread has gone somewhat stale, about as much as you'd expect after being left out overnight. Whoever left it here left many hours ago. It's a little messy, but it doesn't look like anything violent happened here. Someone was here after Stella and I left yesterday. We didn't leave the kitchen like this. She went home though, didn't she? Stella's kitchen normally this messy looks normal to me. Hmm. I mean, we didn't leave it like that, but didn't she go home? So what, do you think someone rummaged through the kitchen? Yeah, it's strange. She must have come home last night. Why would anyone else leave the living room in the piece living room in one piece just to trash the kitchen. I mean, the town's surrounded by monsters. Maybe they got hungry. <laughs> or maybe she came home last night and had a snack and didn't feel like putting things away. I feel that, but then that leaves us with another question. If she came home last night, where did she go and why did she leave? And why haven't we been able to reach her? Hmm. Let's check her room. You make your way down the hall to what you assume to be Stella's room. <laughs> Look at her cryptid, like, what is that called? Like, investigation thing on the wall. She's not here. Though it's a little untidy, it's the usual sort of untidiness that accumulates when someone doesn't often have guests in their bedroom. There aren't any signs of violence. You do notice, though, that her jacket is nowhere in sight. It isn't in her closet, and it wasn't on the coat rack in the other room. Jacket's gone. Ooh, check her computer. I love seeing someone's room before they've had a chance to clean it. What? It's a neat little snapshot, you know? I'm sure she looks like a room. Any thoughts? It's a mess. Check her, I don't think. Let's... Her jacket's gone. The Letterman one. It wasn't on the rack in the other room, it's not in here, and she didn't have it yesterday. Okay, I'm sold. Between this and the kitchen, she must have come home last night. I agree. And it seems like she was the one who decided to leave. No struggle or anything. I mean, we're checking it. Uh, I'm not sure we should be snooping on her computer. Is not in big sort of, but she's missing. She's in danger. We already broke into her house, right? For all we know, there could be some sort of clue on there, like a note detailing exactly where she is. We didn't break into her house. The door was left wide open. Well, maybe the computer was left open, too. I'm with Avery. What if we don't find Stella? It's all because we didn't snoop on her computer. If Stella didn't want us to snoop, she shouldn't have gone missing. Okay, but what if she's been gossiping about us, really? Look, I know it's an invasion of privacy, but we gotta do whatever we can to find her. Let's see if it's password protected before we make a fuss about it. Kanika's got a point. You're no fun, but fine. No, no, Kanika's right. I honestly didn't even think about how this might be a good idea, good call. I think we should do whatever we can. Personally. Sure, snoop any snoop away, but I'm not going to take part in this. I'll just be over here standing in the corner of the room, not looking over your shoulder. I don't blame you. Da da da. Let me know if you find anything. Stella's desk desktop is horrifically cluttered. There's simply too many files and folders to fit on her monitor, and they overlap each other in a chaotic, multi-layered display. Hmm. Whoa, how do we find anything on here? You don't. Come on, let's go. <laughs> um, check her open tabs, check her search history. You're right, this is a waste of time. Open tabs, I guess somewhere to start. It would take you all day to count the number of open tabs in Stella's browser. So numerous, so numerous are her tabs that you can't see a single icon. A sea of rounded featureless triangles from windows edge to windows edge 
Her most recent open tab is a post on Uncle Carl's Bigfoot Farm, a forum for cryptozoology enthusiasts. The post is qu- posting question is titled, Something Big is Happening in, ooh, in Scarlet Hollow. Hey, everyone was out chasing a skunk ape sighting the other day, and I found these weird little guys. My friend's mom says there's something called ditchlings, but I've never heard of them before. Anyone have any good leads? Bride of Bigfoot. <laughs> Camera isn't shaky enough. This is totally staged. Oh. Moth stand. Clean footage and some sort of cryptide nobody has heard of except for your friend's mom. The only thing I'm seeing when I google ditchlings in some city in England that you were legit. Thought you were legit. Lucky stars. Guys, since when did high quality footage count as anything other than actual evidence? Those things are terrifying. Since every low budget horror movie started doing guerrilla marketing, I smell a an hey RG. I'm serious, I've got a ton of extra footage. Look what they've been doing to the animals in town. They are apparently some sort of bad omen like Mothman. Okay, I'm listening. I love me a Mothman. <laughs> I believe you. Ugh, lucky you're falling right into her lap. I don't trust YouTubers. They're entertainers, not scientists. Jeez. The thread continues into the next day. Hey, okay, so one, this isn't an ARG. I would never. And two, you're not going to believe this, but we went into an abandoned mine last night to investigate things, and I'm pretty sure we found some Tommy knockers. Listen to this knocking we managed to catch on tape. There's a link to an auto file titled Tommy Knockers Real. W-A-V. Just because you put the word real in your file name doesn't mean they're real. Two supernatural events on back-to-back nights. This is so fake. I can't believe I bought into that river runner hype. You're so full of it. Jeez, why are they being so mean? Maybe she ran away because these people are being bullies. YouTubers are always going to sell out to big indie horror. This is kidnapped by aliens all over again. Also, lol, doughy white things and now loud popping noises. This is definitely an arg. Didn't you sell out to Pillsbury? Yeah, stop cyberbullying her or I'm going to call the mods. Seriously. Locking this thread and giving everyone a seven day ban. No cyberbullying and no self promo. I agree, Uncle Carl. The thread ends. Wow, poor Stella, remind me to never be in it, never be internet famous. Here's hoping my SoundCloud stays niche and underappreciated until the day I die. Check her history, I think. You check Stella's search history. She hasn't visited any websites since Tuesday night. If she came home after last night's incident, she didn't touch her browser. Her search history is almost entirely work-related. A furious series of queries? Quarries? For our various monsters and cryptids. That might fit the profile of Ditchlings. That's that. I think we've seen enough. It didn't help us at all. Thank God. Um, it sure looks like a room. I mean... Sure looks like a room, any thoughts? I think you about summed it up. This is definitely a room. Yeah, nothing much to comment on. This is what her room's been like for pretty much the entire time I've known her. The only thing that's changed is the computer getting a lot fancier. It could use a few more houseplants. I'll put together some trimmings after we found her. Oh, so considerate. Aw, oh, she still does those, yeah, corkboard with with string things. She loves putting the strings on there. I don't think they actually mean anything, but they're more for decoration anyways. Okay, I don't think we're going to find much else here. Let's move on. So she went home last night and left. Or someone kidnapped her. She probably came home last night, but she's not here now. We don't have any idea where she might have gone. I thought I was overreacting this morning. I hope she would just be sleeping in. I can't believe she's actually missing. We'll find her, hopefully. Where to next? 
we're not going to the cops. We can go to, hmm, um, let's check Oscar and Rosalina. Tabitha dropped off the keys this morning. The old Maxwell place. So Tabitha put them up in a broken down ruin that should have been bulldozed years ago. Ooh. I guess it's good they have a roof over their heads or what's left of a roof. Your cousin is going to get an earful next time I see her. <laughs> they really don't get along like at all. Kanika storms off down the road and you and Avery follow close behind. You don't get far before the sound of growling and desperate hisses grabs your attention. Whoa! Turn to see a ditchling approaching a cornered pixel in an atlas. Is that the library kitty? He must have slipped out of the yeah, library without anyone else last night. You better get away, thing. Ooh. The ditchling, distracted from its hunt by your arrival, cranes its neck to face you, its eyes settling on you with alien indifference. In the distance, you hear the furious patter of many feet approaching. You won't be long. You won't be alone for long. Oh, shit. A horde of them coming? Hey, quit it. Hey, quit it. You weird, lumpy thing. The words feel meek as they leave your mouth and the ditchling, unaffected, turns back to its cornered prey. Don't even think about it. Is there a pipe or something laying around? Maybe we can scare it off. There's no time I'm grabbing Pixel. Be careful, girl. Oh, shit. Before you can react, a small pack of dogs around the corner to the rescue. Before they pounce on the creature, pulling it from the wall and then taking turns biting and tearing at it until it's ripped to shreds. Holy crap. Jeez. Aw, good boys and girls and puppies. Their task complete. They saunter towards you. Good job, guys. What the? It's Daisy. The scraps, too. <laughs> the dogs that run against run against Mayor Jimmy in the last election. Hmm. And every other dog in town all together in some kind of ditchling hunting dog game. Cute. Pixel timidly steps toward you. Aw. Pixel, you got out of the library. Oh, you poor cat. Come here. Pixel cautiously walks towards your group before clam clambering into your arms. He has a comfortable left. He has a comfortable heft to him. Aww. Look how pretty he is. I guess he likes you more than me. <laughs> uh, thanks for keeping him safe, dogs. The pack of dogs scampers off. Their work done. What the hell is going on in this town? Dog politics. Pixel is pixel in tow. You and your companions continue on to the old Maxwell place. The old Maxwell place, it was clearly once a mid-century modern home and undoubtedly quite stylish for the time, but it's been abandoned for unknown decades and moss and vines choke its exterior, barely concealing cracked walls and dust-clouded glass. Oscar! Before you can approach, the door opens and Oscar's head pokes out from the entryway. Hello? Oh, sorry if I startled y'all. The walls here are worn down enough I could hear you coming from a block away. Jeez. Good morning, Oscar. Just thought we'd stop by to check in. Thank goodness you found Pixel. Ros Rosalina's been beside herself. Oscar's voice is tired. He's had a long night in his shows, his graying face seemingly having aged in the hours since you last saw him. Please come on in. <laughs> Pixel! Oh, look how she looks kind of- they look so tired! Rosalina rushes forward, taking Pixel gently from your arms. Hey Rosalina, hey Alexis, look who we found on the way up here. I was so worried, I thought the ghost might have done something to him. Oh. Alexis is helping us put her room together. We don't have- we don't plan on staying here long, but the girls seem to be having fun with it. Thank goodness, even after all they've been through. Yeah, this is kind of cool. There's like this weird intercom thing in a jacuzzi. Ooh. Maybe you guys could fix up the place. It doesn't seem that run down. It is a lot cooler than I thought it would be. 
And I've already met a ghost? No. So it turns out to be haunted. That's no big deal. So if, I see. Aren't traumatized after last night? Did you say this place has a jacuzzi? Can I try? Sorry again about the library. We could always try going on a rescue mission for some of your stuff. Ooh. What's going to happen to your career now that the library's closed? Have any of you seen Stella? We haven't been able to find her since everyone left the library last night. Definitely that one. Anybody? She hasn't gotten in touch with any of you? No. I'm starting to freak out a little. I really care about her and she's just gone. She texted me last night and I haven't heard from her since. Just a text last night. I think she's doing some self-reflecting. I'm guessing that's a no. I haven't heard from her since. I feel terrible. This is my fault, isn't it? I should have done a better job warning her. I Stella was practically begging down, banging down your door trying to convince, trying to get evidence of ghosts. I don't think you were gonna be able to stop her. There was no way you could have known how she would react when she found it. I don't even think she knew how she'd react. Yeah. And besides, you didn't know how big, how bad it was gonna get. You can't blame yourself for everything, man. I know you probably feel like it's your responsibility to make sure everyone around you is okay, but sometimes that's just not gonna be possible. You're only one guy. That's what Rosalina always saying. I suppose I do apologize more than I should. You really do. Now I'm really starting to worry. It sounds like no one in town has seen her. That doesn't mean something bad happened, but it doesn't exactly sound like it's all sunshine and roses for her either. I'm sure she'll be okay, but you should probably get back to looking for her soon. We aren't traumatized. I want to say, can we try it, but do we have time? Not really. Sorry again about the library. No need to apologize. It's a building. You're a person. You matter more than a pile of stones. I do kind of wish we could go back for our stuff. We can't. Thanks for letting me borrow some of your clothes, Alexis. You can borrow as much as you need. I have plenty of shirts, and you can do laundry at our house, too. Of course, there are some family heirlooms that I'd rather not lose. Portraits of my parents, my father's mining jacket. I don't like the thought of their last living memories being forgotten in there. And the fact that it stole the library from me, too. That one really stings. But what are you gonna do? I don't think we should try to do a rescue mission. Mm. <laughs> mm. Not traumatized? I don't know, the past two days have been really weird, but I figure if I've survived all that, it can only get better from now on, right? And we went through it together, I think that helps, it helped me at least. You two are way stronger than me. My nerves are so fried. I feel like I'm one more traumatic event away from a heart. Oh, jeez. Same. Ooh. I think Rosalina got the right idea. We were out of ghost dim dim dimensions. We're out of the ghost dimension. It can't hurt us unless we let it. Sorry. Or unless we go back to the library. Yeah, we're not going back for this stuff. Yeah, none of us are going back there, but it's not like it's gonna come after us out here. Only the memories can impact us now. And memories can't hurt you if you don't let them. That's how I feel anyways. Spoken like someone who definitely won't have repressed trauma after being possessed five years from now. <laughs> um, do you think we'll stay here long term? I think we're just gonna be silent. We kind of talked about everything. What's your plan from here? Gonna stay and fix the place up? I don't think fixing this place is even possible. It's got a cool vibe, sure, but it's also rotting from the inside out. We don't plan on staying here for long. I've run from my problems long enough. One way or another, I'm going to get the library back. I don't care what it takes. I'm not letting that creature get the last laugh. I've been thinking. As far as I'm aware, there was nothing paranormal going on in Scarlet Hollow before very recently. That's our fault. Now here we are, suddenly surrounded by weird little goblin creatures in the woods, while entire buildings are taken over by supernatural creatures. You think there was an inciting event, right? I do, yeah, us coming there. 
That's my thought too. It was never like this in the hall. The hauler. Hauler. Yeah. Like this in the hauler before. Something must have happened that kicked off all this magic stuff. Avery stares at you. Yeah, he knows. I mean, it's obvious, right? Things only started happening once K Bray got here. Kanika shoots Avery a glare. No, we're not throwing K Bray under the bus. Aww. What? There's nothing wrong with being a magical catalyst. Sure, there's probably nothing wrong with someone being a magical catalyst, but there's definitely something wrong with saying someone's a magical catalyst. If people get the wrong idea, we're only a couple of steps away from the whole town deciding to Shaw her. Oh, like Charles Shaw got kicked out. Nobody's going to drag K Ray into a witch hunt on my watch. I like to think we've outgrown the days of running people out of the town on rails. Ha ha ha. I'd rather play it safe. Don't worry, it's not like I'm going to run around town telling everyone that Kay Ray magicked a bunch of terrible disasters into existence. But if there's a catalyst for all of this, why wouldn't it be a lost Scarlet finally coming home to Scarlet Hollow? If I may, Kay Ray getting into town isn't the only major event that's happened lately. Pearl Ann died over a week ago, and those creatures in the woods were already reproducing by the time she arrived. Not to mention I started seeing things in our house before Pearl Ann passed. I think I never thought to make a note of exactly what the spirit made itself known. Whatever the cause of this, there must be some way to put this genie back in the bottle. I'm going to do my best to find out if there have been any similar events, whether there's something special about Scarlet Hall that might explain what's going on. The town archives are, unfortunately, in the library. I told you putting everything online was important. No one uses paper anymore, Dad. You were right. It'll be my first project if we get the library back. I've learned my lesson. Until then, I'll just have to make do with what I can find online. We'll fill you in on what little we know so you at least have some place to start. Finding these weird stone seals. I wonder if this could be the work of some sort of cult. Make sure Pixel stays inside or he might get grabbed by dishlings. I think there's something in the clinic. Whatever we're doing next. Missing vital team member. We're burning daylight. Let's head out. I think there's something in the clinic. There was this door yesterday and I could feel something pulling me towards it. Right, I'd almost forgot everything after everything happened yesterday. You said there was something there that reminded you of the mines, right? I see I'll dig up what I can on the clinic. There's a lot of history there. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something haunting in that place as well. You have a friend that lives there, right? Should we tell him that something bad might happen to his house? He might want to stay someplace else for now if the last few nights are any indication. Yeah, I can shoot Reese a warning text, but I don't know if his mom will let him leave. She's got an iron grip on the poor dude, and she's probably even more of a skeptic than, than I am, or was. One way or another, I'm going to find myself back there soon enough. It's faint, but I can tell, I can still feel the pull of that clinic door, and it's only getting stronger. We need to get Reese out of there before something bad happens. Reese mentioned a movie, <laughs> movie night, really? Perfect cover for an inv I mean, that's true. It would cover for investigation. I'm sure Reese will be fine. I'm gonna break into the clinic and see what I find. Let's be mystical. One way or another, I will end up back there. It's only getting stronger. You're not planning on breaking in, are you? Because if so, no, no, you are not going to do that. Let's not have a repeat of last night. We should be more cautious about what we do next. We don't want anyone to get attacked or possessed by any more ghosts, even if it's to help a friend. Yeah, breaking into places is bad. Learn from our mistakes. I don't know if we have time to play it safe. Just give me a day or two to do some research before you do anything rash, okay? Okay. Um... I think we need to find her fast. I agree. We need her brazen energy if we're going to do any serious sleuthing. Sleuthing? 
see you around, Oscar. Let us know what you find. I will. We're going to get the library back and we're going to figure out how to fix whatever's wrong with this town. So that's Oscar. Any other ideas? Hmm. We're not going to the cops. Should you go to the cops? I don't know. I want to check out everything and leave the mines for last, I think. So I think we'll head to the diner, even though that means Avery might leave us, but we'll see. Let's check out the diner. Good idea. Folks tend to congregate there. Maybe we'll run into someone who's seen Stella. Here's hoping Winnie doesn't try to rope me into clocking in early. That's what I was thinking too. It's funny. It feels like you've walked into a private meeting. The back booth is full of miners and they're having what seems to be an intense discussion. Their expressions gravely serious. Uh oh, oh, because they went on strike, right? What's going on? Or this music, man. There's a strike up at the mines. They made the diner their base of operations. When you asked for the morning off, I didn't think you'd be showing up with friends. Aw. Sorry, Aunt Winnie. Stella's gone missing and I've been helping these two track her down. You've had, you haven't seen her, have you? Don't you apologize now, and I can't say I have. Should I be worried about her? I hope not. We're not interrupting anything here, are we? Of course not. Any paying customer is welcome, long as you aren't about to step on anybody's toes or cause a fuss. The miners in the back were too engaged in conversation to notice you enter. And instead of speaking in hushed voices, argue with voices, argue with each other loudly enough for you easily hear. Sure, the shift's schedule are tough, and sure, we don't get enough time off for me to see my family as often as I'd like, but this is the best job I can get right now. Listen, kid, you're only a year in you're only a year or so into this gig. Trust me, the longer it goes on, the more it sucks the life out of you. At first, you're just unhappy, but you think you can weather it till you find something better. A paycheck's a paycheck, I get it. But the next thing you know, you've lost years of your life to a company that doesn't give a solitary shit about you, that uses up every free second it can suck out of its workers and pays us just enough to survive, but not so much that we can ever save enough to get the hell out. Zax, we could get fired for this. I really need the paycheck. My sister needs the paycheck. I'm the only one reason she can afford her tuition right now. I can't get fired. Yeah, Zax, you jerk. And this job still has its perks, like the company housing. I can't afford my own place and send money back home. I don't know where I would live if I didn't have this job. Right, the company housing. How generous of the big boss to put you up in a company-owned shack that ain't had proper maintenance done in decades. You know she uses that housing as an excuse to pay us less, and the company housing that means almost nobody in this whole damn town owns the place they live. It's why the Scarlets can keep getting away with whatever they want. Zax, we don't have the numbers, man. You know this is risky. Riskier than most of us riskier than most of us can afford. We would have the numbers if y'all would stand with me and not let management scare tactics get to you. Hell, there was a collapse less than two days ago and the boss expects us not to riot at the thought of being forced back down there to work while the threat of death looms over our heads. I mean he's not wrong. The threats only work if we let them. It doesn't matter whose name is on the deed for the place. Without us, there is no mine. That's true. We've got them against the ropes. We can't back down now or they'll come out swinging. <clears throat> Have any of you seen Stella weigh in on Baker and Harrison's situation? That's a little risky. So about the strike. <laughs> Guess we should get going. I mean, we're going to ask if they've seen Stella. She's missing. The miners turn towards the doorway, all eyes glaring at you in unison. Ooh. The YouTuber? We ain't seen her. Harrison's voice drops to a barely audible mumble. Why? You know some secrets? I hope she's okay. Aw. Gosh, do we really say- Ooh, look at Winnie's face. Do we really say anything, though, and get ourselves involved? Like- 
it's kind of their personal drama and they probably don't like us because we're scarlet so I'm gonna say we should get going I don't like to stir the pot personally you turn and leave the diner and Avery and Kanika trailing close behind you still no sign of Stella Again, we're not going to the cops, so let's go to the church. Check out the church. The church? Why? I don't know. I don't really know, because it was an option. I see what you're thinking, Stella was confronted with evidence of the afterlife, so she might try getting into all that religious stuff. It's worth checking out. I don't know. I think we'd be barking up the wrong tree, but I guess we're. I guess you're right. There's no point in not being thorough. I wouldn't mind stocking up on some holy water while we're there, too. Seems like a good idea to cover all our bases at this point. I don't think Baptists do the holy water thing, but I'm sure Pastor Daniel would pretend to bless some water if it meant keeping us around a little longer. Yeah, I'm sure he would. That's good enough for me. Let's not linger, though. I don't want him thinking we're possible converts. Same. Whoa. Kanika leads the way, taking up the gradual slope towards the church. Let's go. You know, I've lived here for a few years now, and I've never actually been to the church. That's probably for a good reason. Where is that weirdo? <laughs> my, my. Four visitors at once. On a Thursday, this is un unprecedented. But there are only three of us. Yeah, what the hell? Oh no, were we followed by a ditch line? Were we followed by Wayne? Oh, sup old people? Oh, hey, just saying, what are you doing here? All the glimpses of death I've had in the past two days have forced me into the midst of an exponential crisis, my dudes. I wanted to see if Faith held any answers for me. Alas, I have not yet found the solace I seek. Give it time, Zane. It sometimes takes a while for the Lord to work his way into your heart. But when he does, you won't regret letting him in. Be sure to look over those pamphlets I gave you. And of course, I'm always here if you need to talk. Sure thing, Pastor D. Peace, y'all. Uh, anyway, we're looking for Stella. She wandered off last night and no one has seen her since. We're starting to get pretty worried. We're, we hoped maybe you or Janie had seen her. I can't speak for Janie, but I'm afraid I've seen neither head nor hair of Stella. If you'd like to talk to my wife, she's just over by the alpacas. Okay, Bray, I was hoping we might be able to talk in private. Why? Uh, what do you have to say to her that you can't say in front of us? I, er... Uh, please, if you don't, if you wouldn't mind, this is a personal matter. Why? It's all right, we can get the juicy details. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna tell them everything you say, sir. I'd rather folks not pry on this. You know how rumors get started. It's okay, I'm happy to talk with them. Yeah, what do you have to say to me that you can't say in front of Kanika and Avery? No way, I'm not talking to you in private. Hmm. I mean, I'm just gonna talk to him and we'll tell them everything he says after. Because I want to know what he has to say. Is he secrets that we need to know about? If you're sure. Uh, I guess we'll leave you to it while we check it with Janie. We'll be right over there by the fence that's conveniently in your line of sight. Okay? Thanks, girl. See ya in a minute. See ya. Your friends head off towards Janie and the alpacas, leaving you alone with the nervous pastor. I'm so glad you decided to come to visit me. So many young people these days seem to think they can solve all their problems on their own. Meanwhile, God is right there, ready to help them, if only they'd let him into their hearts. Pastor's eyes dart back towards the alpacas. Don't judge my friends. Okay, good, they're gone. Oh, you're just you got a facade, man? Are you about to have a different personality? You're new in town. What, what kind of impression did I make on you? Am I creepy? Oh! Well, don't put up a front, guy. 
And no one would think that stuff. Whenever I see you, it's like this ominous little piano starts playing as it plays. I think you pro I think your probably is I think your problem is that you keep telling people what to do instead of actually treating them like human beings. You're extremely creepy. I don't think you're creepy at all. If anything, you've been extremely welcome to me. Personally, I like the cut of your jib. Like the cut of your jib. You haven't really done anything wrong, but you have no chill. Kanika, that's true. Said you smiled through her dad's funeral. Maybe he's just an awkward dude, I guess. I don't know. Think that this is part of the problem. If you have to pull strangers aside to ask them if you're creepy, you probably come off as creepy. Stare at him in silence. Hmm. I mean... Maybe we should say that? I'm not really sure. I like the mystical one, though, a lot, too. I'm gonna say you have no chill. It's hard to open up to someone who's so tense and uncomfortable. That's a harsh truth you're slinging at me. I mean... I wasn't always like this, you know, believe it or not. Before I moved to Scarlet Hall, I used to be pretty popular. Oh. I was one of the cool kids over at Harvard Divinity School. Oh. He's interrupted by the sounds of a snapping twig and a high-pitched giggle, partly muffled by the underbrush on the edge at the property. Who are you? Look how cute. Tulip, come out of there. You know you're not supposed to play in the woods. Tulip glances back into the woods, quiet, quiet as she hesitates. Tulip, are you going to be good or are we going to skip story time tonight? I'll be good. You don't have to skip story time. I won't go into the woods, I promise. I know you won't, Tulip, because you know it's too dangerous for little girls in there. Why don't you go help Mama with the alpacas? It's just about time they get fed and you can give them the hay. Tulip smiles broadly, seemingly excited by the prospect, and hurries off. Sorry I had to have a firm parenting moment just then. She's been trying to run off into those woods a lot lately, and it's really dangerous even for adults. There's this massive trash dump not too far past the trees, but it must be at least 50 yar years old, and it's all grown over and looks like it's part of the landscape. But if you accidentally walk on it, you might find yourself falling into a hip-deep mound of rusty cans and broken glass. Holy shit. Tulip made up some imaginary friends and keeps telling us that they want her to go out there. Like the word of some fictional creature she made up is going to convince us it's a good idea for her to play in somebody's old garbage. Jeez. But she's seven, of course. She would get some funny little idea like that. I'd love to get the community to rally around a big clean -em. It's about time somebody got rid of all that junk. Tennis Lake! Stella did tell us about that. How big, how big a trash dump are we talking with a weekend? What are you saying about imaginary friends? Yeah, Stella and her friend used to play out there all the time. One of them sick or died. I'll let the kid have fun. What were you saying about... Is it ditchlings? Some, someone's luring her into the woods? Oh, she's just been talking about these friends of hers lately. Little stories about creatures that live in the church. I'm sure she saw some animal in there and decided it was her friend. No, man. Those are ditchlings, and you better be careful. It's nothing to be overly concerned about except the trash heap situation. Yes, it is. Out of the corner of your eye, you see Kanika and Avery walking back to the two of you. They must have finished talking to Janie. All he wanted to know if he was creepy or not. Janie says she hasn't seen Stella either, so we better get going. Thanks for suggesting we had up here, Cabri. We got to feed alpacas. They were so cute and soft. It was awesome. I'm jealous. Janie says she'll come by the diner with cookies for the miners and a few extra for me, of course. <laughs> uh, hope your talk with the pastor went well. Yes, we had a great conversation. I appreciate you all stopping by, even if it wasn't under the best circumstances. I'll let you all be on your way. And I hope Stella turns up soon. I'll put in some good prayers with the big man for her. All right, thanks. See ya. Kanika and Avery start back down the path to town, and you follow.
What's up with these like ominous like no music cutouts? Making me nervous. So, uh, what was that about? He seemed pretty insistent on talking to you alone. It was about nothing. Yeah, he didn't say anything weird, did he? No, it was about absolutely nothing. Nosy, aren't you? Let the man have his privacy. He wanted to know why everyone in town thinks he's creepy. Everyone in this town is so mean to him. He's a nice guy. Tulips apparently made some weird imaginary friends. We might want to check it out later this week. I want to say that... Dot, like he wants to know I but I want to say that too let's see if we get to do both he is creepy I agree girl it's kind of sad isn't it I don't think he has a lot of friends people do weird things all the time to try and fit in <clears throat> point taken but that doesn't mean he isn't creepy let's not get too distracted until we find Stella though where to next dang it Oh yeah, we can still say it, right? Oh no, uh, a T, I thought it was for tulip. Cops mines, cops mines, cops mines, cops mines, cops mines, cops mines. Mines. I guess there's a decent chance Stella went to find your cousin. I can't say I get it, but it's definitely something she would do. You don't see it. Oh, come on. The two of them have such a dyna dynamic, you know, classic dog and cat situation. Come on, I'll drive us. You follow Kanika to her van. It isn't long before you find yourself outside the Scarlet Mines. Once again. Why are we going to the doctor's house? There's a small gathering of workers outside the entrance to the mines. Picketed signs in hands. I am unhappy with the... Something I am receiving as a wonderful and better hours now or home, none at all. I hope it's not weird to talk to them while they're in the middle of all of this. Don't worry, I know these guys, most of them are in the diner at least a couple days a week. They'll be chill. Will they be chill talking to Tabitha's cousin though? Good question. Well, if it isn't the boss's cousin, oh shit. You might have had us fooled the other day, but word gets around fast. Hail and well met, follow fellow countrymen. What goes on here? How goes the strike? Have you... I'm just gonna ask if they've seen her. She's missing. The YouTuber? She's the one on all the banned from property posters, right? We haven't seen her. And we've been out here all day, so we'd know if she'd come by. We'll make sure to keep an eye out. Hmm. Should we ask them? Okay, let's go. We need to talk to Tabitha. Probably should talk to Tabitha. To see if she knows anything. So you're saying you want to cross a picket line? You don't have to literally cross the picket line to get inside. There's always the whole Rosalini used to sneak in the other day. Ooh. Sneak in. Hey, Kanika, can you vouch for me here? Avery, can you help out? Let's just go. Call Tabitha. Sneak in? You pull Kanika and Avery aside and tell them your plan to sneak in. I guess that'll work, but I don't think it's a good idea for us to follow you in there. Yeah, I've never really been sneaky, plus all the miners know me. I'll stick out like a sore thumb. We'll just wait outside by the van. You make your way to a hole in the fence and sneak into the mine. The industrial noises of the Scarlet Mines are only a little quieter than they were two days ago. The trailer that serves as Tabitha's office looms above you on the hill. Knock, enter, knock, enter, knock, knock. You walk up to tab this trailer and knock on the door. You wait for a moment. No response. Enter. You open the door. Rodriguez the rat. <laughs> that was that achievement. I think I can turn at least a few of the guys. And oh, and if you fire Davis, you piece of shit. Oh my god, have you heard of not? I did knock. What are you even doing up here? Uh, should I go? 
Yeah, and make sure no one sees you. No one else, at least. Oh, jeez. What were you talking about? I missed you this morning. Hey, do you have a minute? It's important. I don't care about the strike. I just came to see you. I'm telling. Yeah, right. We used to be telling on you. You are selling out the other miners? Don't worry. I'm on your side. I saw nothing. I heard nothing. Do you have a moment? It's important. I really don't. But you're already here, aren't you? Make it quick. Uh, should I? I already said you can leave, Rodriguez. We'll talk more later. What a piece of shit. Look at the band posters that she has. That is funny. The door clicks closed as Rodriguez leaves Tabitha's office. Ooh! That kind of scared me. The instant you're alone, Tabitha rounds on you. Oh my god, I got the chills from that. She grabs you by the collar, her face close to yours, eyes full of rage, her words a frustrated hiss. Listen to me, Kay Ray. Really listen. Oh my gosh. This isn't some fun little game, okay? This is my life, and if you value yours, you'll keep quiet about what you just saw. I don't care if we're family. I can make the rest of your stay here a living hell if you cross me. Oh. Her grip loosens as Tabitha turns away from you. Your eyes are drawn to the gun hanging above her desk. Jeez. Oh my gosh, that was scary. Sorry to get scary for a second. Yeah, I'm so close to having everything under control here. I can't risk you mucking it up like you've done with everything else. I said nothing about Rodriguez, and those were like options, so I don't know why she liked that. Ooh. What are you going to do? Shoot me? Yeah, seriously. Start crying. We should talk about the strike, and we should talk about what just happened in here. No, we're chill. I get it. Hey, hey, I'm on your side. That was completely uncalled for. How dare you touch me like that? I'm glad you're having such a hard time. The Scarlets are finally getting what they deserve. Should we dare say the keen eye one? Yeah, let's do it. What? What the hell are you talking about? I mean, you just threatened our life. She follows your eyes up to the gun on the far wall. Oh, that? I'm not gonna going to shoot you. Whoa, I got nervous again. What did you come up here to talk about anyway? just decided you wanted to bother me on the worst possible day to be bothered. Stella's missing. Have you seen her? I want to talk about the strike. I wanted to see how you were doing with the strike, your mom, everything. Let's really talk. Yeah, right. Not after that. I'm done here. See you around. That's all. Bye. Love you. Bye. Turn and leave. Have you seen Stella? She's missing? Yeah, dude. Tabitha's quiet for a moment. I'm, I'm sure she'll turn up, but I'll see if I can get a hold of her. Whoa. Don't think looking for my missing acquaintance gives you a pass to do anything dangerous. You're forbidden from doing risky things even for what you might think is a good reason. I'll wind up where I wind up. Those who seek to avoid doomed prophecies often fulfill them through their attempts to be free. I'm going to do whatever it takes to find her. I don't think I'm able to judge what's risky or not. Last night was supposed to be a cakewalk. Okay. You know, I do what I want. I promise I'll stay safe. Hmm. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to find her. Great. I can't wait to find out what ridiculous situation you wind up in today. I want to talk about the strike. Um, I mean, we could, I guess, I guess we'll ask her like how she's doing. But still, jeez. Did you really think I'd want to have some kind of heart to heart right now? Sorry, Kay Ray, but I have to work to do. Save your pro probing questions for some other time or never. I don't care which. Jeez. If not now, then when? I'm only here for a few more days. Yeah, I think it's Thursday now. So, just trying to connect with you. You're making it really hard to connect with you. Why did you even invite me here if you dislike me so much? I just wanted to have a conversation with you on my own terms instead of one you dragged me into. God, you suck. I can't believe we're related. Sorry, I'll go. When? Says the person who ran off yesterday instead of spending time together. If connecting with me is what you really want, you're doing a bad job of it. Um, <laughs> I kind of want to say the love you bae. Love you bae. <laughs> 
Don't be weird. <laughs> We're trying to be funny, not weird. You leave the office, the door slamming shut behind you. I do wonder why she invited us here now. Was it like to make all this start happening? All the spooky shit? You find Kanika and Avery waiting for you outside. You don't look like you've found any leads. Yeah, I did not. You look back at the striking miners. Warn them. No. No. I want to, but I don't like to stir the pot. They'll probably, like, mug that guy or something. We're gonna keep it to ourselves. You don't need to go around spilling Tabitha's secrets. That's true, too. Feels like you've done, we've done our due diligence here. Come on, I'll drive us back to town and we can figure out our next move from there. I guess the cops, that's the last thing. Where to next? That's it. Maybe she'll have some ideas. Are you sure? Nothing against the officers of Scarlet Hollow, but you've met them, right? Do you think it's worth the trouble? As unhelpful as they are, we are dealing with a missing person. That's cop stuff. It's probably going to be more of a formality than anything, but there's no point in not covering all our bases. What happened to the music? Just in case we're going to save it real quick. I don't know why the music is gone. <clears throat> that was strange. The police station is exactly what you would expect from a town the size of Scarlet Hollow. It smells strongly of coffee and faintly of aged furniture and paper. The general tidiness speaks of a department that doesn't get much of anything done. What's up, Bo? But you're also not alone here. You enter to find a worried Bo standing between you and the officers behind the desk. Let me get this right. You're trying to report a missing pumpkin. Yes, Officer Hugby. Big Betty wasn't just a pumpkin, Sheriff Hugby, sir. She was going to be a prize winner. Raising her was the last thing me and my daddy did together. She's important to me. Are you sure it was Julius and not some enterprising bear that got a hold of it? Y'all know Julius thinks that land belongs to him. He probably thought Big Betty was his to take. He ain't coming to his door, so for all I know, he might be all the way up, all the way to the state fair by now with our pumpkin. Ain't there something y'all can do about it? I'm afraid we'll need at least some kind of evidence to go on before we can barge in, bargain? Into a, barge into a man's <laughs> home, son. Why don't you see if you can find something a little more solid for us to go on, then we can see about helping you out. Stella ran off last night and she's still missing. Bo, did you manage to find your dad? What's all this about a pumpkin? Weird question, but are you folks part of a cult? And is that why you aren't doing your jobs? Can you folks arrest a ghost? Let's get going. It looks like folks are busy. Have you found your dad? His face, sorry. Bo's sto stoic? stoic expression breaks, and for a moment you can almost see tears forming in his eyes, but he blinks them away. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I found him. Hear that, Deputy Franklin? Sounds like you've got another report to close. Lucky me. I gathered what there was to gather. We're giving him a proper burial in the family plot. It's been tough going, trying. It's been tough going, trying to dig the hole while the farmer's crawling with these hairless things. But it needs to get done. Do you think they'll go back where they came from soon? Mama and me have tried to fight them back as best we can, but it seems like there's more every minute. They will once they've had their fill of suffering. I'm personally doing everything I can to send them packing. They'll leave once coming disaster has finally struck. I know that. Uh, I know about as much as you. I'm sure they'll leave soon, buddy. Sybil says they don't hurt people. I kind of like them. Halloween's in just a few days and they've really helped set the mood. Um. Um, I'm sure they'll leave soon. I hope you're right, but I can't stop feeling like something even worse is about to happen. 
things have been getting weirder around Scarlet Hollow lately, and if the past couple nights are any indication, it's only going to get weirder. My mom did say the ditch ditchlings are supposed to be some horrible omen, but that doesn't mean it's true. For all we know, the weird stuff is behind us, and these creepy little things will crawl back to whatever they came from, and Scarlet Hall will go back to normal. normal. But I guess it doesn't hurt to plan for the worst. I'll do my part. I'll take out as many of those nasty little creatures as I can. I hope it helps. Okay. What's all this about? We know about the pumpkin. <laughs> We're not gonna ask if they're cult. Have you seen Stella? She isn't at home and none of us have heard from her. She what now? Oh, that's just our Stella always running off. I shouldn't worry too much about it. She'll turn up. This is different, Earl. You know I wouldn't be up here bothering you if it wasn't important. And there are a lot of them things out there. Too many of them. Bo's right. She shouldn't be off on her own. And there's so many ditch things creeping around the broad daylight. Okay, okay, you're right. We're probably just overthinking things. Why do you even come here? This is useless. Bo's right. He's right, Hugby. Don't give me that look. Ditchlings? They've got to be them creepy little things I told y'all about. I called about them last night too since they've been coming up on the woods onto the farm. I even saw some on my way here, plain as day. Oh, we've been getting a lot of calls about those. Scarlet Hall has either been invaded by ghouls or we're all suffering some kind of mass hallucination. I may have seen one or two myself. All the same, I don't see what we're supposed to do about them or about Stella. She's a grown woman. If she wants to go off to the woods for a bit, we don't need to go after her like she's missing missed curfew. Whatever, guys. It's a free country. If, mm. if there if there are critters bothering folks and stealing livestock, ain't y'all supposed to take care of them? Now, now, son. We ain't normal. We ain't animal control. We're the police. Are you kidding me? This town doesn't have any ha even have an animal control department. Well, maybe it should get one. Hmm. Is there a point in asking if they can arrest the ghosts? I feel like we're not getting anywhere. I guess we'll ask about the pumpkin and then probably be done. Seems Bo here misplaced a considerably large pumpkin. Have y'all heard of a word I said? It didn't misplace Big Betty. She was stolen and I know who done it. So I'd appreciate it if y'all would give Mr. Tremaine a visit and set things straight. And I'm telling you, we can't barge into your neighbor's house just because you want us to. Okay. Uh, what makes you think... What, uh, why, what makes you think he stole it? You're poking a wasp nest, Gabriel. There's a hundred years of history here. Oops. He's been claiming Big Betty was his since day one on account of he thinks it was planted on his side of the property. The Calloways and Tremains have been at this a long time. They can never agree on whose land is whose. This ain't the first time we've heard something like this and we got our fair share of calls from Julius Tremaine too. You know, Julius is a friend of mine. He's a lot of things and he's definitely a bit of a curmudgeon. Curmudgeon? Curmudgeon. Yeah help <laughs> but I've never pegged him as a thief I didn't know Julius ever talked to anybody talk is a strong word but I like to think we have some kind of understanding mm, why is so valuable me and my daddy put a lot of work into that pumpkin she was near 2,000 pounds a guaranteed blue ribbon Naturally, our first question is how an old man like Julius Tremaine manages to move a pumpkin that size. Makes the whole story just a little difficult to believe. I don't know how Julius managed it, but I know it must have been him. He ain't even coming to his door to answer for what he done. At the very least, he could have. He could give me seeds from what's left of her. Oh, crying again. Raising her was the last thing Daddy and me did together. That's interesting, because I haven't seen Julius since Tuesday. He's usually in the diner every day. Not necessarily a big deal for a lot of people, but he never misses his morning Joe. So maybe he isn't a thief. Could be something happened to him? Two missing people? 
If he ain't the thief, then who stole our pumpkin? Beats me, I just don't think folks should be so quick to jump to conclusions. How do you move a 2,000 pound pumpkin? Yeah, for real. With a crane, I guess. You want me to go over there and kick his ass for you? <laughs> if you're related to Julius, why can't you just put your differences aside? I think both asking you to throw Julius in jail or something. I don't think. Classic Southern family dispute. I'm sorry for everything that's happened, bro. Why can't you just go take a look? K Bray is right. I ain't asking for much. Bo, oh, if I went down that road, I'm sure Julius would come down here tomorrow and have a whole list of his own complaints, and all of them would sound just as justified as yours. Sometimes it's best to just let things work themselves out. But it sounds like Bo has a real case here. It's not just two neighbors having an emotional dispute. Property's been stolen. Couldn't you get involved in his, on his behalf just this once, after everything he's been through this week? You say that like this is the first time one of these feuding farm folk have come in about missing vegetables. We've heard it all. And what we've learned is it's best to keep our noses out of it. I'm sure Bo here will be unsatisfied with whatever the legal system feels is just punishment for stealing Big Betty. It doesn't matter what happens if we do anything, Julius will be storming in here the next day with a complaint of his own. Heck, he'll probably come down here regardless. Yep, and it'll be about a missing butternut squash or what have you that he's sure made it into a soup on the Callaway side of the property line. You know, even if Julius didn't take Big Betty, it might be worth doing a welfare check. Yeah, seriously. All right, let me speak in plainer terms. Everyone knows that Julius Tremaine's land is booby-trapped to hell. It's not worth it. That's never stopped me. Yeah, do you have kids, Avery? Because I've got two teenage girls at home. Huggabee's got grandkids. Franklin's got the mayor, I guess. <laughs> I'm not about to risk getting my head blown off over a pumpkin. <clears throat> That's right, there's some sleeping dogs you learn to just let lie. <clears throat> Sorry. I've, I've been Scarlet Hall Sheriff for over 20 years now. You don't hold a position like that for so long without learning a few lessons on temperaments and moderation. If I may, if I may, sirs, ain't that a mite bit cowardly of you? I thought police officers were supposed to be brave. Not the ones that live very long, son. Look, I've been to Julius's a hundred times. I can tag along and make sure nobody gets hurt. That's a mighty kind offer, but let's give it another day. There's no need to escalate things when they might just resolve themselves. Um, we're not asking the cult question, or if they can arrest the ghosts. Uh, we'll be on our way. Thanks for nothing. Mm, well, that was a total waste of time. It wasn't a total waste of time. We got to find out what's going on with Julius. He's been missing from the diner for a few days. It's weird. He usually comes in every single day. Maybe he's preoccupied with ditchlings. Good question. I just hope he's okay. Where to next? As you consider your next steps, you remember your appointment with Sybil. She seemed to be confident last night that Stella would be okay. Maybe she'll be able to find help you find her. Nobody ever seems to say anything to undermine her except for her daughter, and daughters always clash with their mothers. This town trusts her. You have to see her. She's the thread tying everything together, but at the back of your mind, you can't help but feel if, as, if there's some, as if there's more than just fate drawing you to the tea room. You should talk to your mom. I'm supposed to have tea with her. My mom wanted to talk to you. She's probably going to give you some rocks or bundles of herbs for protection or something. We can humor her. Let's do it. To the tea room. Hello, why do you look so worried for Kanika? The bells of the general store chime welcomingly as the three of you enter. Kanika, there you are. You were supposed to stay in bed today, remember? And hello to you too. Hope you're both recovered from last night's fiasco. Sorry, Mom, it's just that Stella is missing, and I... Stella can take care of herself. Unlike you, you need bed rest and lots of fluids. You don't need to go running around town spreading that cold of yours. Go on, get up to bed. I'll be up in a minute with more tea. 
I thought you had some kind of important thing to talk to Cabri about. I'm really feeling okay. I want to hear what you wanted to say to her. I'll just be doing a tea reading. Haven't those always bored you to tears? Da, da, da. <laughs> that means yes. Okay, you're right. I'm not feeling well. I should really lie down. <clears throat> we losing Kanika too? Bye, Cabri. Oh, shit. We are. Kanika turns and heads toward the stairs without saying another word. Good thing Kanika has her mom looking out for her. She seems so tired today and you'll probably be able to find Stella without her. Okay, if you say so. Wait, this isn't right, is it? Something's going on here, but it's hard to put it into words or pin it down into thoughts. And I'm so sorry to be a bad host, Avery, but I was hoping Cabri and I could do our reading in private. I'm sure Winnie needs help at the diner. We're losing them both? Oh, you're right. I've totally left her on her own today. Fine by me. I wouldn't want to mess with your tea vibes. I'm sure those leaves are very particular. Oh, but before I go, I did want to ask, are you a witch? <laughs> we asked her that last night too, so I don't blame them for asking. As flattered as I am that you think I'm that magical, I'm just an old lady who likes tea and a few uh, unusual hobbies. Look, I'm just saying doing stuff like reading tea leaves is pretty witchy as far as I'm concerned, but I won't push it. Though just so you know, if you are a witch, you can totally tell us. We'd be cool about it. I'll leave you all to your non-supernatural private tea leaf reading. We'll catch up tomorrow, Cabri. Yeah. They make their way out of the general store, disappearing down the street in the direction of the diner. Shall we? Sybil motions toward the tea room. I'm nervous, though. Ooh, ominous a little. Please have a seat. I'll bring you a fresh cup. Whoa. You take a seat at the small table at the edge of the room. It's dark here. Only a silver sliver of sunlight able to filter through the heavy curtains supplemented by the bright grow lights over the plants in the corner. Sybil joins you at the table and places a cup in front of you. It smells light and citrusy with an undercurrent of deca decaying earth. It's the same tea you sampled with Avery at the diner on Tuesday, the Chugga Chuga. This is a special blend. It should help clarify some of the visions you've been getting. Hmm. I'll be able to do a reading once you're done. Until then, how about we just chat? Sip your tea. Ooh, how do you wind up in Scarlet Hall the other day? You promised to tell me what is it unsavory tales, my mom's youth. Quite yanking me around. You have something to tell me, just come out and say it. What's with all the mysterious mystery and ritual? If you have something to tell me, just come out and say it. Drink our tea for a sip. <laughs> you take take the tea, sipping it delicately. The citrus smell is fleeting, quickly replaced with the earthiness at its core, like you've taken a mouthful of dirt. But the aftertaste combines the two flavors into something soothing and medicinal, and you find yourself fleeing more comfortable, feeling more comfortable, your muscles relaxing for the first time in days. It's soothing beyond what you would expect out of ordinary tea. There must be something magical at work in this blend. How'd you wind up here? Oh, my family's been in these hills for a long time. That's how I know so much of the local flora. Everything I've learned was handed down from generation of hill folk. Her family's been there a long time. There hasn't always been a reliable doctor up here, especially not one most folks could afford. They have to figure out their own medicine. Hmm... Listen, I'm not going to be rude. Stop yanking our chain. I most certainly did, though I might have been exaggerating a bit for dramatic effect. I'm prone to do that. In a town this size, you get to know everybody, no matter what age difference might be. Vivian was a little younger than me, which meant I always had a certain older sister instinct about her. 
Her family wasn't good to her. Pearl Ann was a lot like your great-grandmother, Edwardine, which is to say she was not a very kind woman. Great-grandmother, Edwardine. I'm trying to put all the stuff together, because Edwardine was pregnant with Charles Shaw, baby, and then did him in. So, so our, so Edwardine gave birth to our grandma, who gave birth to our mom, and Pearl Ann. Similar to Tabitha, but with more social grace and considerably more hatred for her fellow man. But your mother wasn't a shrinking Violet either. She was just as stubborn as any other Scarlet, so her family choosing her as their punching bag made her into quite the rebel. Why were Pearl and my mom raised by Edwardine? What happened to their mother? Yeah. What do you know about my grandma? I feel like I know a lot about women in my family, but what about the men? Did they even exist? What happened when my mom found out she was pregnant? Changed the subject. Heck no, when I changed the subject. What happened to their mom? Their ent entry. Their entry? Into this world was violent. I'm afraid their mother was young, too young to be pregnant, especially with twins. Oh shit, twins. She didn't survive the labor. Mm, what do you know about her? Anything? I'm afraid there isn't much I can tell. I think there were two in that generation. The eldest died when the girls were still children. Edward Dean never spoke about them, nor did your mother. You like you know, do the men even exist? Because Charles Shaw got bludgeoned to death. I suppose they just haven't been very noteworthy since Edwardine took over the mines. Her husband died a long time ago, and to be quite honest, I can't even recall his, you can't recall Edwardine's husband's name? Charles Shaw. Might have been Stuart or something, just as forget it wasn't it Charles Shaw? From what Vivian said, her father was some teenage fling that ended once your grandmother found out she was pregnant. I'm fairly certain it was similar for Vivian, though. She was much older, and I believe she was the one who ended it with what skipping town and all. What happened when... Does she leave town then, right? She came to me for advice. She was distraught. It was like she'd been handed a death sentence. Maybe it was fear from what had happened to her own mother. Maybe it was something else. But she seemed convinced she was in danger. Tabitha had already been born by then, of course, but she was born in wedlock, so I assumed your mother worries had your mother's worries had something to do with religion. Though the Scarlets weren't particularly religious as far as I know. But the way Vivian was the night she came to me, it stuck in my mind. It's always had me wondering what it was about your family that made her panic so much at the thought of having a baby. Hmm. Should we finish the tea? I feel like these are so rude to say. Finish the tea. You close your eyes and take another sip and then another. It's delightful. The tea is gone before you know it. The, the small cup empty. The, the small cup empty save for what's left of rehydrated leaves coating the bottom. Oh good. Glad you found the tea palatable enough to drink. I should do you it should do you some good. It's one of my more medicinal blends. Now on to business. We have the Grimm, <laughs> you know, Harry Potter, the Grimm. Sybil takes the cup from you, staring thoughtfully down the sledge. Oh dear, this doesn't bod, bod well, bode well. You've got just about every warning that can fit in the bottom of a cup. Cross, kettle, hourglass, Grimm. All of those mean death, misery, difficulty, and the hourglass ties it all together with definite definite urgency. It's fair to assume that this is all has to do with whatever brought the ditchlings. Something is coming, and whether any of us can stop it, I'm not sure. But we, weigh it, we may at least, at the very least, be able to figure out what it is. And there's a central figure here, a cat, an enemy lurking in plain sight. Oh. Yeah, Wayne, maybe. 
I'd like to see, oh, that cat's gotta be Pixel. Maybe it's Fru-Fru, those are two cats I know. Cat, could be Tyler, could be Wayne, yeah. Could be Stella, could be Kanika, Oscar, Reese, Avery, what? Could be Dr. Kelly, she's been nothing but hostile since I met her. The cat could be Pastor Daniel. How do I know you're not the cat? I'm gonna say I'd like to see. I'm sure it wouldn't make much sense to most people. It'll probably just look like a confusing mess of old leaves, but you're free to take a look. The Grim. You take the cup, staring down into it. Mm, it's hard to tell. <laughs> I can't really tell. It's just leaves. There's no pattern, nothing swimming together in the drag dregs of your tea to give any warnings or premonitions. After a long moment, Sybil takes a cup back from you. I hope that settled your curiosity. Don't worry if you couldn't make sense of it. It takes years to learn this sort of thing, even for someone with your pros propensities. She winks conspiratorial. What the heck? Conspiratorially. Conspiratorially? Hmm. The cat could be Wayne. That was my first thought. He follows me wherever I go. It's almost like he's literally lurking in plain sight. He says he's my friend, but I'm not sure that's true. But he's a, my good friend, and I trust him. He was in our closet. It's creepy. It's not. Don't trust a word out of that man's mouth. What the heck? But I doubt he's the cat. The cat implies a certain level of two-facedness that I don't think he possesses. Two-facedness. You don't have to figure out an answer right away. It often takes time for the mind to connect the dots. Two-facedness would mean someone close to us, right? Tabitha's is not two-faced. She's straight up like, I do not like you. No thanks. Uh-oh. Just be on guard and keep vigilant that someone close to you isn't to be trusted. Oh! We know from the ditchlings that something terrible is coming your way and it's likely that it's connecting to some hidden enemy. Perhaps we can try to concentrate whatever might be planned counteract whatever might be planned for you. Judging by what you told me last night, these stones, carvings, seals, whatever you want to call them, I think it's likely they have something to do with this. Until the cat reveals itself, it seems like your best course of action is to seek those carvings out. Piece together what you can from your visions and arm yourself with information. Have you sensed any others around town? Do you think you might be able to find another? Yes, we do. Oh. Your thoughts drift to that door yesterday. The one that seemed to draw you in, urging you deeper into the clinic. Even just remembering it is enough to tug at you, compelling you to return and open it to see what's on the other side. You can find Stell later. Maybe you can even find her there. Yeah, that's what I wonder. What's important now is finally seeing what's hidden in the clinic. Here we go. I think I felt another in the clinic. Bad stuff always happens around them. I shouldn't seek out more of them. Those stones need to be left undisturbed. That's good. If you can find your way inside and uncover another stone, that could give you a leg up on your adversary. Adversary? You'll just have to be careful to avoid the doctor. Yeah, I hate stealthiness. Something tells me she won't take too kindly to you sniffing around her clinic. If I recall correctly, there's a hill that'll take you nearly all the way to the second story, and she never locks any of the doors up there. Just in case that's helpful information. I think that all that's all the help I can offer. I hope this conversation has been illuminating, even if it's just brought up more questions than giving any clear answers. That's it. This wasn't helpful at all. All you did was look at some leaves and tell me to go put myself in danger. Thanks, I'll let you know if I find anything. Glad to hear it. I hope all goes well and I wish you luck. Hopefully you won't need it. Yeah. Thank you again for humoring an old lady and stopping by for a chat. Of course. 
With a small grunt of effort, Sybil gets up from the table and you're escorted back to the door. And remember, be careful who you put your trust in. According to your tea, the cat is getting ready to pounce, and merely being ready for it might not be enough. Well, shit. Sybil closes the door to the tea room, the bells of its door strangely flat in the stale air of the nearly empty general store. Miles, what's up? Hey. It's your mama witch. Ghosts are real, just saw you should know. So can you guys cold, huh? See any weird rocks around town? That's what she says. She's just trying to get out of work again. Like, I didn't have anything better to do all week while she sits in her room watching anime. <laughs> I don't blame her. Says the guy in Goku pants. Oh, I didn't even notice. It's probably good for you to have a week off. Her. What? <laughs> I gotta say it. Everybody knows Dragon Ball is good anime. She watches the trashy shit. <laughs> uh, um. See any rocks? Yeah. You. <laughs> he smirks. Clearly, this is a very sick burn, and you should. Feel bested by his wit. Is your mama witch? Wouldn't you like to know? We're getting nowhere. Um, do you know? Yeah. Seems that's all he's going to say on the subject. Just let you know, ghosts are real. His face. Yeah, I know. I've seen tons of videos of ghosts doing stuff on the internet. I'm not 12. Okay. Good chat. You're not going anywhere before checking in on Kanika. You make your way upstairs. Knock, knock, knock. Mom, I really don't need any more tea. I think I'm just going to lie down for a while. Uh, I'm not your mom. Okay, Ray, what's up? Can I come in? I was hoping we could spend a little more time together. I need to talk to you. It's important. I'm going to the clinic. I was hoping you would join me. Ugh. You don't have to listen to your mom, you know, you're an adult. I could use a breather, let's hang out for a minute. Sure, let's hang out. Just give me two seconds, it's a disaster in here. I wanna see what her room looks like though. You're frantic crumpling and clinking and shuffling as she tidies her room. Okay, come on in. Mm, look at this. Why is everybody so cool in this freaking game? Kanika's room is the sort of place that stuck between the past and present. Faded stickers from her childhood line, her bookshelves and boxes and boxes of packed belongings sit in the corners of her room of the room. The terrarium on her desk catches your eye to anyone else it might seem empty, but you easily spot the creature lurking within. Where? Sorry, <laughs> to be in your face, it's in the right corner. That's the creature. Ah, yeah. someone let me know what's in the terrarium, please. I don't usually have people over. Don't judge me too harshly for the state of the place. Tip, dialogue, op tip. Ooh, romance. Dialogue options marked romance. We'll start a romantic arc with the character you're talking to, and we'll lock you out of romantic arcs with other characters. No. Remember I was saying that how hard it is to pick someone? Uh. Ah. Confess your feelings. Whoa. Ugh, oh, fudge. I can't pick. We still have to find Stella. I'm not going anywhere without you. I'm going to investigate the clinic. You should come with me. Should she come with us? Oh, what if something happens? I'm a little worried. Packing for something? He motioned to the stack of cardboard boxes. That's all my stuff from college I never really unpacked. It seemed like a waste to unload everything. It's not like I'll be staying here long term, so I'd just have to pack up everything eventually. I guess I didn't have I did move back in over a year ago, so these boxes have just been sitting here unopened for a long time. But any day now I'll load them back into the van and get out of the town. Get out of town any day now. Hmm. Oh, fudge. I don't know what to do. 
if I don't decide now with her, we don't get to romance her, which is kind of annoying. I just want to romance everybody. Love for everybody, you know? Fudge. I want her to romance Stella a bit, but she might be the cat, too. We're not going to romance Kanika. Uh, wanna come? Hopefully it's not, like, a bad idea. I was hoping to be able to check in with Reese sometime today. I want to ask if he knows anything about Stella and, you know, make sure he's okay after what happened at dinner. Yeah, screw this. Why did he even listen to my mom in the first place? I don't need to sit around in my room just because she said so. Said to. I hope... Oh, shit. What the fuck? Two of you make your way back into the hallway. Whoa, what is happening? She's not letting you leave? Boo! But before you make it to the stairs, the light turns on. Startling both of you. I thought you were going to get some rest, Kanika. You should really get back to bed, or this cold of yours will only get worse. But I still have a lot of energy. I don't feel like sitting around. I don't think I need to. Of course you do. I know you I know you best, and you just haven't been yourself these past few days. All this running around has been a detriment to your health. Miles and I want to see you healthy. You hold this family together. You shouldn't get between a mother and her daughter. Sybil knows what's best here, and Kanika is more than capable of speaking for herself. Why are you making her confront her mother? You barely know Kanika, and yet you're trying to drive a wedge between her and her family. We weren't trying to do that, though. Those thoughts aren't yours. Clear your head. Something isn't right. Oh, shit. She's tricking us. She's doing magic on us. Sybil, what was in that tea? Yeah, for real. You manipulative hag. Kanika, don't buy any of her bullshit. Lady, you are being really creepy. Sybil, you can't expect to control your adult daughter like this. I don't even know Kanika is sick. I think you're making it up to control her. Let's go, Kanika. Hmm. It's just gonna say what was in the tea. Chaga and lemon balm, dear, and the same blend Avery shared with you the other day. So, like, has she, like, known our thoughts as for a while now? What? Why are you talking about tea? I'm not gonna say manipulative hag. Ooh. Remain silent or say let's go. Let's go, right? Will she do something to us though? Let's, let's go. Oh, this is hard. Try to guide Kanika towards the stairs, but it's like she's rooted to the floor. Kanika sighs. I'm sorry, Mom. I know I've been neglecting the general store, and I let Miles run off the other day. That was so irresponsible of me. That's all right, Kanika. He could have gotten hurt, but he didn't, and it seems like you learned a valuable lesson from the experience. Now let's get you to bed. You just need another day to recover. Then you can get back to all this town mis mystery business. Okay, Bray, you'll be fine without her until tomorrow. We tried. My mom is right, Kay Bray. You go on without me. See you later, okay? Well, before you can utter another word, Kanika returns to her room. Whoa. Sybil's eyes carefully watch you as you leave and make your way back to Main Street alone. Dang. I'm back. Just to let you know, I split the videos up into two parts, so go watch part two. It's really good. It's crazy. You're gonna love it. And I will see you there. Bye-bye.